Good morning, Oliver. Good morning, uh, Lucina. Good morning, Victor. Hi, Lucina. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Taylor. Good morning. All right. Oh, sorry, I'm right. No worries. Uh, I think we're just uh, going to get started. Are you available to lead today? Or you, yep. you need to yeah, I can power? do that. No worries. And we're just getting going. Cool. Share the screen. Does anyone have anything to add um, other than maybe going over the pull requests and looking at the latest uh, best practice? I just just put like a one topic that um, all right captured my attention, but yeah, confidential computing. Um. I, I wanted to raise the um, topic of the the co-chairs and the voting. Um, I, I put something in Slack the other week. Um, I'm going to struggle to make this time regularly um, due to a new project commitment. Um, and it's been over a year since since we, Victor and you and I, were voted as the co-chairs, and I think the term was supposed to be a year. All right. We'll put up another. I think we tried to do it. Something happened, but we can uh, go ahead and put the board again. Seems like a good idea, Tom. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Is there anything to add to the events before we move on to the pull requests? Uh, well, basically, uh, just you remove uh, the um, the open source event, right? Like uh, the last week, we have the the one regional summit and the open source summit in Bilbao. Yeah, I, I noticed that it is not there. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. Oh, yeah, and it's on on the list last week, but not this week. Did you did you attend that? Yeah, so unfortunately, I couldn't attend the one summit, but um, yeah, I had the opportunity to attend the the rest of the open source summit, uh, which was great. Uh, and that's why a little bit about my um my topic in the in the agenda, but yeah, we can talk later about that. I, I haven't seen any other new new event regarding. Okay. What was the what was the open source something like generally? Was there much telco stuff there? 
Um, it, was, it was good. I mean, I didn't found anything um, like different, like um, most of the regular uh, topics were, I guess, focus on security, probably. That's in general. Um, but yeah, the regular attendance, nothing, nothing huge, nothing lower. Uh, yeah, I guess as as as, an, as usual. <laughs> Okay. Um, any other event updates? Uh, I'm trying to think if there are any CFPs to close soon. I think. Yeah. Okay. KubeCon Europe CFPs are open. And One Summit North America the CFPs are open. Okay. Well, maybe a regular a regional event probably in. There would be a KCD in Mexico. Uh, it has been confirmed yet, uh, but yes, it's just more regional. Uh, okay. Once That's I have the information, I will I will share it. Yeah, cool. That'll be good. Thanks. Okay. Um, any other events that we need Uh, okay, no open pull requests. So yeah, the single concern per container one was merged, which is good. And a bunch of CI things. Was there was there a, an issue or a PI you wanted to review in particular, Taylor? Um if there, you know, no PRs, and I guess nothing there. Uh, I don't think we had a CNF working group with the new pull, the best practice that was merged. So maybe just going over, taking a look at it uh, would be the next thing. Okay. Since we didn't have anything actually on a call. Gotcha. Okay, so is this one number five? Uh, so do do you uh, do do you or so I know you and Victor and Oliver did most of the work together on this. I don't know if one of you want to run through it. Yeah, I think so. We had um, Victor, Oliver, and I that were um, going back and forth and and trying to get a large amount of the content. And then we kept getting input from, you know, there's a good number of comments and suggest edits that ended up pushing it over the finish line in the pull request. Um, anyways, uh, Victor or Oliver, do y'all want to take a stab at summarizing what we've done? Oh, uh, well, um, I, I I don't know, like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically, you, you want to, to describe, like, provide summary about what it, what is this best practice for, or, or? Yeah, just summarize it, since, I mean, we all talked individually, but we didn't have anything on a working group call, so just what what's the best practice in the end, and any highlights on, I okay. think there were some note, um, caveats, and then just some notes and stuff that we ended up merging in at the end, and then maybe we look at what's the next best practice from an working Got it. Okay. Uh, well, just in summary, um, well, the best practice is trying to um, um, suggest to you um, to define, like, put in just single a single process type or container in terms of like a design of the, the CNF application, um, and it's highlighting the the benefits. Um, 
we have detected multiple benefits in, in different areas, like, um, for example, in the way to upgrade uh, the services, like um, in terms of security, we're reducing the attack surface and um, controlling the, the observability and and so on. Like, uh, uh, there, there are things, polemical things as, as always, like, um, um, and 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 also like uh, as 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 again like as an, another thing, we're not trying to define exactly uh, the, the the way to define things. Like uh, we we left some room for uh, architectures, um, architects to to define things, uh, but general is is that that's uh, that's uh, the best practice. Like. Um, suggest to 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 have like a single process type uh, in a per container which are there is also a good references at the bottom uh, where you can also um get on deep like uh providing uh, especially the benefits uh, in terms of performance like uh, uh what else how others in the industry are using the same things. And if I remember like uh, two weeks ago, someone was also using some of the information in LinkedIn for providing a similar thing, right? I don't remember who, who was like referring that one in one of the articles, but. I don't know, Oliver. Do you want to add something, like uh, uh, Not so much about the 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 best practice. I think you covered that pretty well. Um, maybe just a reflection on how we worked. I think you know we. I don't know if we can re replicate that. Uh, I mean, it would be ideal. I think I know we we tend sometimes to be more than more than three people in this in this call and i think you know if we could figure out a way to scale that a little bit um I, for me personally i'm a little bit maybe less uh less uh experienced in in these writing these best practices so i found it very useful to work together in you know having a couple sessions i think we had generally one session per week um where we tried to you know in addition to the monday call which i think is you know we cover we cover more things and i find it um, you know, people need to have an interest, obviously. So sometimes people are here to listen, but uh, if they're interested in driving one of these forward, I think doing that alone or just doing that sort of asynchronous can sometimes be a bit of a struggle. I, I found us having lots of conversations. A little bit of it was wordsmithing, but I think, it, you know, in the end, it also helped to, you know, allow some, some learning of areas that you may not know that well um, and sort of then from there be able to contribute. So hopefully we can do something similar as we, you know, on on the next one uh try to find a way to say you know there's some working sessions and if you want to get involved um you know that might be a, a way for us to get some get more momentum just a thought oh yeah that's true it's a it's a, it's a good point i guess yeah that uh covers a lot of good sessions working sessions that we had and, and once that we create like a good draft and we publish like um it was nice to receive a lot of feedback from others, like, uh, for example, Jeff. Yeah. Just give us some additional things. Agree. Okay. Oh, thank you. I think part of it is just familiarity with the process uh, like you were saying oliver that you weren't as familiar with writing a best practice but i, th I think it's just uh, partly the format in general as far as being more formal and everything unless you're doing that type of documentation um you may be familiar with an area of the content but actually trying to format it and you know, we we did this on purpose at one point, trying to cover different areas. It is more formal than some write-ups. We look at like 
both factor and stuff doesn't look as formal as that, but the points are there. Um, we were trying to cover different areas where we've had questions in the past in the top one user group, different white papers. So trying to cover all those areas, we if we decide that you know, the format isn't for us, that's fine. But I think the content that we covered is good. Uh, if if other folks are interested though in, in trying to get specific best practice that they're passionate about or using and work, trying to solve problems, then any of us that have already gone through this can try to help and I think once it gets going, the momentum. So that's, I think, what we need to do next. We have this one uh, related to, it's more general practice, I'd say, but it's pr the principle of a single concern for a container or trying to, it's related to microservices, it's not just that. So there's the microservice architectural stuff in there and then that principle for single concern is could be applied in other areas. We're applying it to containers. The idea of having a focused area so your team can work on it and all the other benefits. So we have that sort of thing and then there's um, other practices that may be more like specific. When we did the no root in a processes in a container that one's like a more specific and you know we can go either way but does anyone have any specific ideas that they want to work on and we do have open issues so we have open issues we have the discussion board area where there's a lot of different topics some of the things are more of multiple best practices in a whole discussion, which is fine. So if there's just an area that you care about versus a practice, that's fine. We don't have to pick the practice today, but if, if we know a, an area to focus on. So so now that I am seeing uh, what uh, Tom is sharing, uh, maybe uh, I think that we can close the, the best practice, uh, I mean, the best practice, uh, which is referring about the single concern. Um, if that is not closed yet, uh, you see what I mean? Uh, that, yeah, exactly. Because that, uh, I guess the, the criteria that we have was based on, on the, or at least the, the, the criteria that we use for creating the the next P the next PR was based on the number of discussion and, and that's why we pick um the single concern. Yeah. So now, now that it is on, yeah, it's time to to choose another one. Um so yeah, I I think the answer to your question, Lucina, is yes. Yeah, um, thanks, Lucina. <laughs> So, so regarding the the topic, Taylor. Uh, well, probably I can um, share what what I heard um, initially about the, the topic that I bring in that into the agenda. Uh, at least for me, um, during the open source summit, they there were several sessions talking about confidential computing. Um, maybe it's not a new uh, concept because uh, yeah, it's a regular rest, uh, practice or like. Regular technologies that has been existed for a while, like uh, from Intel SGX technology from others. Um, so, but yeah, it just captured my attention, like multiple people talking about confidential computing, like uh, sharing like benefits, uh, pros, cons, uh, technologies, projects. Um, at least, at least from my point of view, my main takeaway of the conference was a little bit around uh, confidential computing. Uh, I think people were um, categorizing confidential computing in, in three different P 
pillars. Um, obviously, the first one is storing the information, um, like uh, encrypting hard disk. And the second thing is about uh, the, the data, how the data is in transit, like using secure protocols to, to change information. And the last thing was more referring to the runtime, like uh, things like how can do configuration computing in the CPU and the different technologies that they can use. So my point, or at least the, the point that I'm trying to bring to the table is like, uh, should we have any best practice in confidential computing or like, do we have any anything related with confidential computing? Uh, maybe, maybe I can raise the, the topic in the discussion or things like that. I don't know if the, there should be a, a, a best practice for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, just just one, one topic that I brought my attention during the the, the open source summit that I just wanted to share. I just include like a, a regular uh, wiki entry because, uh, but I guess there, there are plenty of more useful uh, links or like information about this particular topic because yeah, as I just mentioned, the, the, the concept has been for a while, but it, it was it was interesting that people were like, like multiple uh, tracks were like a, or session were talking about the same topic. So um, do you reckon there's any like best practices from a CNF point of view? We you know we could create an issue for um, kind of users reference within an issue that we've got already. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, but before creating like um, any issue or just moving forward, do you think that it could be a good candidate or like it's a good idea or like, have you ever heard about anything about confidential computing at all? It's not something I've read into an awful lot, but I think security is a key non-functional requirement of you know, technology in general, but certainly in telcos. Um, I think it would be, I think it would be good to include some security best practices. I don't know, I'm a bit nervous about doing that because there are a ton of other good security best practice sources elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's something that's kind of specific to CNFs or type of applications that we're doing where confidential computing could be something we recommend or, so, or you know, some of the techniques are. Uh, yeah, because I, I, as I understood about the topic um, regarding the techniques. Um, there were like different technologies where like, for example, of some of them were like securing just a container. Others were expanding the scope, like a, not only the container, also the, the holes, the whole pod, and others the, the, the worker node. And the last thing was another techniques where, or projects was considered like securing all the, um, the cluster, like, um, of course, yeah, there are a few open source projects like they are try trying to tackle this particular uh, problem. Yeah. What about use cases? Were there use cases brought up or do you have specific use cases for networking telecom related? Well, the only thing that came to my mind is like, uh, for example, um, Maybe one of the the core uh, the core network components um, could be I don't know if UPF or one of them which requires some security addition into the, uh, the, the I think the, the the way that they call it is like a, uh, I'm not sure it's secure 
runtime, runtime secure. Like when, when they are like loading things, registry or things in the, in the CPU, they, they were ensuring that the, the, that information is not accessible from outside like that. But in these in this terms, in, in this, in this particular case is security at the CPU level, but not like a, so, so I'm not sure if one of the coordinator components require this level of a, um, security. But yeah, I can double check like maybe, it, yeah, it's a good question. The diagram to me feels weird where it says you if you use a confidential computing library, then you're you're safe all the way. But otherwise, I, I mean it's talking about trust boundaries, I guess, but at some point you gotta pass it up the stack to get it like some information is passed up. I guess it's saying that you're gonna try to keep everything at the the application layer, the application process at some point has to access. I don't know. It just kind of feels weird. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, let's see, like when was this edited and who is wow, there's a lot of references in this. Um yeah, that's why I guess it's not a, a new topic, maybe just like yeah. a People so the, all of the providers are, it's just talking about hardware providers. I I don't know. I have a bias, I guess, to feel like, is this just promoted by all these companies that are trying to sell their chips versus <laughs> why, why aren't we just saying uh, zero trust? Like zero trust is about trying to, it's to me, zero trust is really just the concept that um some security people have been pushing for a long time don't trust anything at any at any part of the pipeline or any anywhere you are you're all you should always whether you're in development you know it's or testing or anywhere else you're going to always try to have security built in if you have it baked in at all layers then you're going to be better off than saying we got it covered at this one spot um i i haven't looked at this in a while um i know some about the trusted computing but i know that there was in the last several years there's been like exploits on some of the early ones um like intel was you know one of the first doing yeah the hardware and if you gained access, and I, I think there was even like some security bugs that went into manufacturing, if, I, if I'm recalling correctly, but the uh, like where people exploited in the manufacturing process, but there was some other stuff that made it out into production. And when you get access, then you can, you get everything. So um, just saying that it's covered is, I don't know, I have a bias against it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I think it makes people feel like we're good now. We don't have to think about it instead of thinking you should do this all the way through the whole stack. Security through the whole stack, you know, automation through the whole stack, development all the way to production. You should, in my mind, it should be a holistic approach for everything. Okay. I would like an examination how confidential computing and zero trust and stuff, like maybe a comparison of that um, would be good. Yeah, especially to find that use case, like if there is a use case for that, yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense to use. I could definitely see it as part of it. It seems like it would be one part. And you have the use case and you say, we're using, um, you know, different practices from competition computing along with other things. Yeah, well, probably the, the question is in, in different order. Like uh, maybe maybe competition computing is the solution, but there's a solution for what? Like uh, for what? Right.
All right. Uh, well, that's that's one option. So. I can, I, can I didn't realize the Confidential Computing Consortium is a Linux Foundation. It's related to Linux Foundation. I don't know how it's um, related. But well, they... one of the solutions is Kata Containers. Uh, it, it seems to be offering like a part of one of the solutions, but yeah. I dropped a link into the chat. notes. Oh, nice. Yeah, to that one. You can look at the members. So it looks like cloud providers are listed along with um, the folks like ARM, Intel, Red Hat's there, Microsoft. Interesting. We got a bunch of security companies that I'm I'm seeing in the second level. Vera Coops. Wow. Accenture, they're a premier yeah. member at the top. They probably have a lot of the con government contracts that are going to be more. It, if you click on about, then you can get a members. So Accenture probably has a lot of the government contracts, which are going to end up using more of this sort of type of security, just have it built in, including, you know, systems that have no network, no external network. Meta has a lot of government contracts. Yeah. Looking at the projects that are listed, it, from what you were saying earlier, it feels like they're part of the zero trust idea. So how can you how can you put um, things in place to trust certain parts of the stack? You know, like attestation of the hardware, for example. Oops. That's making more sense. Yeah. <laughs> if you get the Mexico KCD in Veracruz, that'd be good. <laughs> a funny name for a project. <laughs> yeah. Nice place there. Um, okay. So is, is, do we want to sort of do anything as in have an action or actions about this? Um, well, I, I can try to find like a use case. Um, if I can Google something quick uh, later, like and just in case that you want to consider, but. Yeah, I think it'll be good because I guess it, it's um, it's kind of tricky because things like hardware attestation, are, are, you know, it's relevant to telco. It's part of, for example, in the UK, the new Telecom Security Act. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's hard to, in the short period of time we've had today, for me to work out what we might be able to test. Um against a CNF or a Kubernetes platform layer, you know, at that kind of level of the stack. So I think if we were, if we were testing hardware attestation, we'd probably be trying to load some unsigned something or other onto a server and testing that it's rejected, um, which is a bit below the Kubernetes layer perhaps. Okay. What about some other ideas um, for areas? Like we've been talking about 
deployment automation. Yeah. Um, you know, this could be stuff with projects like Nefio, uh, Flux CD and Argo CD are being used for automation um, in networking telecom stuff. Uh, Butcher Telecom, they're using Flux with GitOps patterns. Uh, I think Orange might be using Nefio. I can't, I can't recall. So it seems like there should be something around automation that would be of interest. Does anyone have anything specific or an area that we could focus in on? Oh yeah, that's a good topic. Like uh, the deployment is, is could be uh, one option, like uh, defining best practice for deploying CNFs. Uh, and the other thing, I don't know, it could be part of that best practice, but also the way it, uh, the, the way to package things. Uh, I'm not talking just like putting in a container. Because like, um, there, there is like a, a good discussion about using Helm charts versus other things, like um, um, especially uh, KPT is like a, the kind of a new approach with, with Google is pushing too, too hard to, to have it. Um, Obviously, there are pros and cons with uh, the existing solutions like um, like Helm or um, Customize. Um, but I guess also could be a, a good opportunity to define like a new ways to to package applications. Um, Probably the question is like, uh, should should Helm is still a good way to to package or like what what is the best practice to package an application? Like how to um, offer that CNF to to customers and, and consume in the best way? Yeah, I think that'd be a good one to cover because um, we could then either including that or link to something around um you know custom resources and operators and that that framework and that concept because helm can play a part in that but it could be part of a kind of wider maturity scale that we look at mm -hmm. i think that'd be good yeah And another hot topic about different communities trying to tackle the same thing is about defining um, the hardware requirements. I know that ONAP has been trying to put something in the CSR uh, packages. Uh, Silva project as well has a proposal to define uh, hardware related things in, in the CNF and eventually uh, NFIO is trying to do similar thing, like uh, defining what are the hardware or like the, the 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 software dependencies as well of the CNF application. So um, I don't think that we have a best practice in that area, but um, at least it's, it's a topic which uh, different communities are trying to address in, from from their own perspective. So that's more around the packaging rather than the automation method. Yeah, that's right. Um, 
should we start a couple of discussions on GitHub and see what the uptake is, or maybe just create the issues? Um, you know, I don't know what the preferences around how to gather opinion about the what to focus on first. Yeah, I guess it's a good idea, and that way we can sense um, the, the 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 community is more interest inter has more mm. more interest. Mm. Yeah, if we, we start a discussion on on GitHub and then post it in Slack and and elsewhere, try and get gather some opinions and thoughts and and then maybe create an issue and start PR for something that's most popular. Uh, is there any uh, challenge, Tom, that you're seeing at Vodafone where if people were following an area like principles, it doesn't have to be specific practices or pr specific practices, either one, that you would find helpful? <clears throat> Or is there um, a challenge that y'all are having that maybe we could dig into and maybe we end up finding practices that help either way? Yeah, so I think the the main challenges we have, we, we shared in Amsterdam or along the lines of um, there's, a, there's a kind of different set of delays between a community Kubernetes release and then so a community Kubernetes release happens and then there's a different timeline between a platform vendor making that available in a version of their product uh, and the CNF vendor having tested their applications against the new versions of the APIs and the new features in that new version of Kubernetes and then onwardly the new version of the product from the platform vendor and that, that, that's one of the bigger challenges we've got the other challenges are around um kind of the automated testing of validating that new stack if you like so cnf version a running on platform version B, which uses Kubernetes version Z and, you know, CNI option N. Um, and how do we, how do we kind of get to a point where we can automate the testing of that validation without being too opinionated about what each of those version numbers are or particular choices of subcomponents of a platform. So if someone needs to use Calico for the CNI or someone wants to use Antreo or someone wants to use OVN or someone wants to use Flannel, we can still test and validate that. Um, that that feels to me to be one of the, the kind of the main challenges. There's a, there's a bunch of other challenges that we've got, but um, many of those are organizational and you know modernization things i think that the thing that introduces the most delay between you know starting a thing to launch something and it being launched is it's kind of testing and validating that complex set of options you know features and versions of features and so on Um, I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous about trying to be a, too opinionated on what those subcomponents should be, mm. and rather make sure that the framework for testing is flexible enough to allow, you know, the each each telco and each service provider to decide what works for them.
Um, so integration testing and like, I guess, and in, in, individual testing, you need both for those different options. So as a, if you have something like a Calico feature for some type of network setup and you need to make sure that that keeps working. And then you need to make sure that it works with the new version of a CNF. So there's, seems like there's both types of automated testing, the individual, um, whatever that's going to be, unit, unit, API, whatever, and then some type of integration type testing. And then, you know, yeah. for all the different options, it's, it seems like there could be, so we don't have to talk like opinionated, you must run Calico feature X because it made, it did something nice or whatever, but Maybe there's something around um, being uh, supporting the automation automation of testing. So if you uh, there's something around like how things fit together as far as like the API APIs um, being exposed and um, Providing on the integration testing, I mean, there's if if you require a someone to come in and manually run through like large data sets and they have their own special tools and that's the only way to test, um, that would be a problem. So there's got to be something around that where we can talk about um, providing like some capabilities. So something beyond just your liveness and readiness pings. So some you start doing something else, exposing something else. So um, I'm not coming up with like a specific best practice right now, Tom, but I, I think there's something there where we could look in like, how do you make this possible? for testing and then maybe maybe there's something about just the testing in general i mean like there's it's not saying testing is best practice but something with relating it to um your test cases and stuff, we should be able to run those in the pipeline or you should be providing test results. So if you're doing like a complex pipeline where passing between teams, instead of, you know, saying, here's the operations team with their pipeline, we take it, we onboard it. But you may have like development to production teams. And now you, you have to say exposing the results. Well, there's some companies that are looking at taking from the development from an external org. So now you need to have, did you, do you have test? Are you doing sign off? So if you're saying yeah. an, an image has been signed off as secure, so there's those sort of tests. Can you also sign off? Here's the test results. And then as a, consumer you say those test results are covering what we want and it's signed so we can move it forward i don't i don't it seems like there's something that we could uh, pull out of this practices yeah i think there are um i'm sort of thinking back to i think i shared it and it's in the manifesto thing that we're working on elsewhere but those cnf automation use cases and um, th they're kind of always the starting point for us about what's important and how do we how do we improve what we're doing? We want to kind of automate these lifecycle management operations. And then I guess it's trying to delve into each of those and think, what is it? You know, what characteristics of a CNF or the way it's designed or built or operated? Are things that become a best practice that then mean that we can automate those lifecycle operations. 
And I'm, I'm not sure I've properly done that. That next step of the thought process yet. Um, but yeah, okay. I'll, I'll have a think. What was the first um, challenge? I I didn't get it typed into this uh, before you're done. I was hearing it, but it we kind of got on since then. The first challenge before the automated testing. I'd like to summarize that one. So it's the it's the um, the difference between uh, the matrix of Kubernetes versions that a CNF vendor supports for a given CNF version and the matrix of Kubernetes versions that a platform vendor is offering at any given in time, at any given point in time from the upstream release. That makes sense. So, you know, one month after a Kubernetes release, I'd expect neither a platform vendor or CNF vendor to have updated anything. 12 months after Kubernetes release, you know, a platform, some platform vendors are just releasing a product that includes that version, whereas the CNF vendors are thinking, well, we want, we want you to start removing that version now. So it's a, it's that, you know, there are sets of Kubernetes versions that each vendor supports or provides and trying to align that set of versions up is challenging. Yeah, I wonder if this is why some CSPs are starting to move towards, uh, move back to, uh, towards, I think would be a way of saying it, bare metal deployments, uh, running their own Kubernetes versions so that they can run more recently production supported upstream releases of Kubernetes and get the benefits there <clears throat> and then have the CNFs running on that. Yeah, maybe. It's a, it's one of those classic trade-offs. You know, if you've, got, if you've got the engineering skills and resources to be able to do that, then that's one of the benefits you'll realize. Um, but if your general mode of operations is to um buy products from vendors then you may not have that, that engineering skills base to be able to sort of run your own kubernetes platform not not in the short term anyway yeah it seems like with some of the it seems like the csps many of them would be moving towards teams <laughs> have the capability to support it if you're looking at building out the expertise training internal operations teams for supporting multi-cloud so if you're looking at um you know amazon and azure microsoft azure and whatever else and you're running you're trying to run on multiple clouds then you're going to have to have the expertise to, for monitoring and stuff like that. And unless you're dedicating, which I, some of them are like, as I've seen some CSPs that are more in well, one, but otherwise, if you're doing multi-cloud, you're going to have to be building out the team that has that like operational understanding for managing like the life cycle. And well, if you're moving towards that, uh, it, it, oh. go ahead, Victor. No, no, no. The, the thing that I was saying is uh, what the, the, at least the use case that I have heard is um, when you have, for example, so for your core networks and you are using different components of different uh, vendors and those vendors have different requirements. So if you're using AMF from one vendor and the SM and SMF are from other one, so eventually you can have that situation when you have some level incompatibility, even if they're exchanging messages using the, the, the standards and all the protocols and following the Etsy um, um, compliance and everything like that. 
So, so having those requirements, how can you deal with that? Uh, and especially now that you have like a, a Kubernetes um, in up cycles, um, that also increases the chances to 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 run in those particular. I mean, it's, it's I guess it's not mainly by um, technical limitations of the group. It's mostly uh, compatibility between between different CNFs. It seems like, uh, let's see, um, possible issues. So compatibility of requirements between different CNFs. So it seems like that's one that you're pointing out. Mm -hmm. So that seems like an area also where we could look at best practices. So talk how do we increase compatibility yeah and it is one of the things that it is one of the things that in nephew they are going to work on that in this particular second release mm -hmm. like having uh one of the components with freefy gc and the rest of the components with uh open open ar open um oi um, because it's open Air interface, I guess that, that's the name of the project. I think, I think it's just it, you know, it's good to delve into. I think the, the challenge is going to be testing for that compatibility. You know, one one instance that sticks out in my mind is, uh, you know, two different products from the same vendor. You know, this is something we've seen in the past where um, one of the products uses Multis to provide multiple interfaces. And therefore, um, because, because those secondary interfaces aren't kind of first-class citizens in Kubernetes, we can't use network policies. And therefore, we've got to use um, some kind of firewalling technique outside the Kubernetes cluster to protect access in and out of those secondary interfaces. Whereas another product unit in the same company would would achieve the communications flow via a different route, and and sometimes the the requirement is a you know an internal CSP security requirement that drives one or other of those behaviours, um, and so you know some of the challenges we've seen aren't necessarily compatibility in the kind of um sense of the word of meaning that you know cnfs can't run on one or other of the platforms it's that we're getting inconsistent um i guess inconsistent requirements for, per cnf if you like so it's, it's it's challenging to test that sort of thing um in, a, in an automated fashion because it's it's probably quite specific to the security requirements of a given CSP, I would, I would assume. That particular example. All right. Awesome. Um, I wrote down this in the notes. Um, this seems yeah. like areas to dig into. There's some deployment stuff. I'm actually I'll just put that right in there. Nefio, mm -hmm. yeah. Dimes. Um, I think that's also here. Um, there's probably some GitOps stuff. Matrix supported. I don't know exactly, but I think there's probably GitOps. Okay. Those are like relating it to challenges are good. Um, Victor, if you think of more challenges and stuff to dig into the use cases. So maybe Tom, if you could uh, talk and um, talk with some folks and we get some specific use cases on either of these areas written up, then maybe that would be something to do. <clears throat> um, yeah. All right, we made it to okay. the top of the board.
Yeah. Thanks all. Thanks everyone. Okay. Cheers. See you next week. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.